It's NBC 26 at 10. Brown County officials say one man is dead after a crash in the village of Bellevue. Plus, a dozen boys still trapped in a Thailand cave waiting to be rescued. Weather continues to be a concern. And a bike tour benefiting the Breast Cancer Family Foundation kicking off this weekend. Brown County officials say one man is dead and another is injured after a crash in Bellevue that involved two pickup trucks. NBC 26's Juliana Falk was at the scene and has more. Brown County officials say it all started here at the intersection of Eaton Road and South Grandview Road when a pickup was headed south on South Grandview Road. Officials say a 19 year old stopped at the stop sign heading down South Grandview, but says he didn't see the pickup truck coming down Eaton Road. Both trucks crashed into a yard on the corner, knocking the stop sign down. The other driver, a 51 year old man, was trapped in his truck. According to police, he was not wearing a seatbelt. One neighbor we spoke with is thinking about the man tonight. I think it's sad because uh, who knows what uh, he might, who knows the 51 year old might left behind, you know? He also says this is a fairly quiet road, adding he hasn't seen an accident like this in a while. He encourages everyone on the streets to be extra careful when driving. Always view ahead and be aware of your surroundings before you proceed. Brown County officials say the 19 year old does have a lower back injury. He was transported to St. Vincent's Hospital in Bellevue. Juliana Falk, NBC 26. A pilot and a passenger are safe tonight after their plane lost power and landed in an open field in Sheboygan County. This comes according to county officials. They say it happened just before 8 tonight, just south of County Highway FF and west of State Highway 32 in the town of Herman. The plane was coming from Washington Island. Switching gears now, beautiful start to the weekend and sounds like it'll stay on that track. Let's check in meteorologist Gino Recchia with more. Gino. Mo, not a bad start to the weekend with temperatures right near seasonable valleys for this time of year. A little cooler by the lakeshore farther inland. We're in the lower 80s to near 80 degrees this afternoon. We got temperatures that are near average. Our average high for this time of year is 80 degrees. Take a look back in 1936, 103 degrees. We're not going to be anywhere near that. As for the rest of the season, and overnight temperatures will cool down into the lower 60s and upper 50s tomorrow a little bit warmer but overall a pretty extravagant weekend mo all right you know thank you and a rescue effort unlike anything the world has ever seen continues in northern thailand authorities say 12 boys are trapped in a cave and now the weather is making it tough for rescue crews to get the job done nbc's bill neely reports from northern thailand Rescuers here are worried about falling oxygen levels inside the caves. They're also worried about falling rain, and there has been a cloudburst here. Meanwhile, the parents have written letters saying to the boys that we don't blame you. And one mother has also written to the only adult down there, the coach, saying no parent is mad at you. We have every confidence in you. The rescue commander, meanwhile, is saying that everybody thinks that because we discovered the boys, that we've won this war. He says we have not. And he says the rescue operation is like nothing the world has ever seen. Nothing rescuers have ever undertaken before. And of course, the death of a Thai Navy SEAL has just underscored the dangers of launching an immediate emergency rescue to get the 12 boys out. Their scuba training has now finished and rescue commanders are waiting for the moment when they take the decision to launch that rescue attempt. Bill Neely, NBC News, Northern Thailand. To the Trump administration, who will the president nominate as the next Supreme Court justice? President Trump says he'll let the nation know on Monday. The list has been narrowed down to four. Two are Justice Kennedy's clerks, Brett Kavanaugh and Raymond Kethledge. The third one, who is a favorite among religious conservatives. And lastly, Thomas Hardiman, who was a finalist before Neil Gorsuch was chosen. This comes as tension grows over the trade war with China. I respect China and I respect President Xi. But they've been killing us. And the president claims his new economic pressure will lead to improving trade agreements despite likely higher prices and job losses. Federal officials are rushing to meet a court deadline to reunite migrant children with their parents. Some families have been reunited, though, but others may have to wait. The Trump administration faces a deadline of July 10th, and all other minors must be reunited to their families by July 26th. 
Uh, government officials are saying they need to properly vet and verify each parent using a DNA test. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar says his agency still has about 3,000 children in custody. A former newspaper reporter says allegations claiming Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau groped her 18 years ago are true. In a written statement, Rose Knight says Trudeau, who wasn't in politics at the time, apologized the next day. The Prime Minister also told reporters yesterday he doesn't think he acted inappropriately, but said Knight may have seen it differently. I apologized uh, in the moment uh, because I had obviously perceived that she had uh, experienced it in a different way than I acted or I experienced it and I think this reflection as we move forward needs to uh, continue uh, in our communities, in our places of power, in our places of work. And Knight says she considers the matter closed. Hundreds of peaceful protesters blocked our northern bound lanes of the Dan Ryan Expressway in Chicago in their fights to end violence. This happened earlier today. The protests led by Roman Catholic priests and anti-violence activists want to put pressure on public officials to address gun violence in some of the Chicago's poorest neighborhoods. Protesters were chanting, stop the violence, shut it down. Chicago police say in the first six months of this year, the city has had more than 200 homicides and nearly 1,000 shootings. Covering Wisconsin now, the University of Wisconsin is remembering a wrestler killed in a car crash. According to police, Eli Stickley died after his pickup went off the road Thursday in Illinois. He and a passenger were taken to the hospital where Stickley died. No word on the passenger's condition right now. And the Democratic candidate running to replace Speaker Paul Ryan has been arrested nine times, once even for a drunk driving in Michigan 20 years ago. Randy Bryce apologized for that incident first reported by CNN. He says it was, quote, dumb and inexcusable. Bryce was also arrested four times for driving with a suspended license. Two other arrests happened while protesting Republican policies. And back on his 27th birthday, he was arrested for marijuana possession. Bryce faces uh, Janesville teacher Kathy Myers in the August 14th primary. And thousands of Harley Davidson riders rolled through Prague today to celebrate the 115th anniversary of the iconic American brand. The four day gathering in the Czech Republic is a European version of the Labor Day weekend rally that Harley has planned for its headquarters in Milwaukee originally. It comes amid tensions between Harley and President Trump, but bikers, they don't seem to be bothered. Harley Davidson will go on and they'll sort everything out. And if they have people in Europe, great, but it'll get sorted. Or maybe Donald Trump will back down, who knows. Harleys will go on forever. And the president has slammed Harley after they said they were moving some production overseas. Harley said it's a move they had to make to avoid tariffs on motorcycle imports imposed by the EU. We'll still ahead on NBC 26 at 10. Hundreds of people will be getting their bikes ready for tomorrow all while serving a great cause. And what's that weather going to look like for the rest of the work weekend and the start of the work week? We'll have your forecast when we come back. And now, your NBC 26 Storm Shield forecast with meteorologist Gino Recchia. How about a great start to the weekend? Not even a single cloud in the sky. We enjoyed plenty of sunshine and temperatures seasonable for this time of year. We have cooled down just a tad into the upper 60s and that dew point 55 degrees. We can still keep those windows open tonight, folks. We don't have any of that humid weather around, at least for the time being, but that will change as we get into the next few days. It is 70 degrees in Shawano, 65 in Oshkosh, 64 in Sister Bay, 61 in Antigo, and 67 down in Fond du Lac. Our dew point very pleasant. It was a very nice day yesterday and that dry air continuing this afternoon and this evening as well. As we get into the next 24 hours to 30, even 48 hours, this will climb from the comfortable level back into the humid and maybe even close towards the oppressive level. So take advantage of it and watch what happens over the next 24 hours. Values get close towards that 60 degree mark. And then as we get to Monday, then we get close to the 70 degree mark. So that dew point, that humidity returning once again into northeast Wisconsin and also with it, the warm and humid weather as well. A surge of southwest air will come in here and bring our temperatures back up into the upper 80s to 
and near 90 degrees at times, but at least for right now, pretty quiet. We don't have anything going on at least for the next day or so. So the beautiful weather today will continue tomorrow. The only change is a little warmer temperatures and also with it a little tad more humid. The reason why is high pressure is bringing in this warm air from the south, but you see that cold front. We do have a chance of some showers and thunderstorms that will return as that cold front comes towards our area by late Monday afternoon into the evening hours for tomorrow. Clear skies, nothing to worry about, but here comes that cold front. Showers and thunderstorms and with it, some cloud cover will move into the area on Monday. By the afternoon, you notice a few pop-up showers and storms. Nothing is going to be severe and it should only be scattered in nature. Behind it, more sunshine on the way on Tuesday. For tonight, 59 degrees, mostly clear skies, light winds between about 4 to 8 miles per hour out of the southwest. For tomorrow, warming up into the mid-80s, we got more sunshine across the area, just a tad more humid in the uh, atmosphere and then on Monday here comes the warm air high near 90 degrees a little cooler on Tuesday and then we get back up into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees as we get towards the end of the work week into the weekend with additional additional chances of some showers and thunderstorms. Yeah, you were not kidding. Enjoy it while you can. I know with this uh, hot, humid weather this summer, it seems like we're just getting small days of it. Oh, exactly. Thank you so much. You know, we'll still head on NBC 26. Hundreds of people will be getting their bikes ready for tomorrow, all while serving a great cause. That and much more when we come back. Welcome back. A work of art taking shape at an Egg Harbor church. Artist Jeff Olson is sculpting a piece of Door County limestone into a statue of St. John the Baptist. It's outside a church that bears the prophet's name. The sculpture should be finished in just about a week. Olson plans to carve statues for four other churches within that parish. And the 18th annual Titletown Bike Tour kicked off this weekend. Proceeds go to the Breast Cancer Family Foundation. Today was also the start of the new Family Day edition where people got to check out fitness sessions, healthy snack shops, and participate in a 15K family bike ride. Organizers say the event is part of promoting a healthy lifestyle. So we go into the schools, primarily middle school and high school right now, and we talk to kids about how they can be reducing their risk for cancer now by doing things like exercising, eating right, sun protection, all of those things that are so crucial to develop those behaviors now. And tomorrow the bike tour will start at 5.30 in the morning at United Healthcare in Green Bay for all skill levels. And coming up in sports, the Brewers bullpen struggles against the Braves. Plus, golfers chase history in the Thorn Bay Creek LPGA Classic. We'll be right back. 